the phonoma algebra, algebra of the group here. Uh, we can just work with this trace. <coughs> okay, so now let's return to the case when pi is uh, just uh, arbitrary. So it means that just any countable group, any countable group. <coughs> and gamma here is uh, a finite index subgroup, so it's just an element in this set G. Okay. Then, now, if I have an element G in pi, then G acts on the uh, pi over gamma, well, actually, the whole group pi acts on the set of left cosets here. This is a set of left cosets. <coughs> Again, permutation is just uh, acts by permutation of the set of left cosets, so you can look at space of G acting on C of pi over gamma. Again, just a permutation matrix, but now it may be uh, non trivial e even when G is non trivial. Okay? However, it's just some number, and I define trace of pi over gamma of G to be this one, and I normalize by the index again. Okay? So that is the, define the trace for. When you have uh, acting on the on the coset here, normalized trace acting on this on this on the coset. Well, it's uh, an easy exercise to show that this is equal to if you take n this is n gamma g divided in by n gamma, where n sub gamma here is just the number of uh, conjugates of gamma in pi, and n gamma of g is the number of conjugates of gamma which contain, so containing G. Yeah, so that is the trace of an element on the coset. Okay? So in particular, if, if gamma is a normal subgroup, then this is just the usual trace of the finite group of G, of, of this quotient group of G here. Okay? Okay, so now I can define what is what I mean by by this limit here. Okay, so this is the definition. And I think this uh, is Farber who first introduced this definition. Is that we say that, uh, we say that gamma n trace so the trace limit of gamma n is 1 if uh, for every element g in the group pi, the limit when n go to infinity of this trace of pi of gamma of g is equal to trace pi of g. Okay, so that is the trace limit here. So it means that, it mean that you can approximate the trace on the group by using finite dimensional trace traces on subgroup okay so that is the uh, the limit well suddenly if you see if pi is if gamma is 1 so this this will be just trace of pi over 1 which pi has this reason why i wrote here gamma go to 1 here okay <coughs> okay so now i can formulate the uh, the theorem and then the conjecture. So the theorem that I had is the following. So we can say that the upper limit when I go to one trace of, uh, sorry, I forgot here, is the log of you have to take the log of this. So it's exactly the same, log of T1 of gamma n, sorry, ga gamma here, over the index pi gamma, this is less than or equal to volume of x over 6 pi. So that is the uh, main reason, and I want to explain the proof of this reason here. Okay, so you have here the limit. <coughs> so this means what? It means that for any sequence of for any sequence of gamma n's in here, 
so that gamma ends go to one, the limit, the upper limit will be less than or equal to volume over six pi here for any sequence. Okay, <coughs> and so uh, certainly, and so this is the conjecture is that you should have here equality. Okay, so it means that. So what does this mean? This means there exists a sequence. There exists a sequence for which you would have equality. Okay. So maybe let's call this conjecture one. <coughs> and in connection with the work with this theorem here, we also have the conjecture two. So there exists a sequence <coughs> gamma and normal subgroup in pi. Uh, it's nested and exhaustions mean that the intersection should be one such that uh, we have equality in this uh, inequality here. Okay, so this is a stronger statement. Okay. I mean, this one is stronger than this one, but in the conjecture side, this one is weaker than this one, right? <coughs> okay, so, uh, so in particular, if, if the volume is equal to zero, mean that when you have, for example, a, uh, a uh, graph manifold, in, okay, because certainly this upper limit is, is non-negative, so if this is zero, then you have equality. So at least you have a, a conjecture for, so it means that if x, its volume of x is equal to zero, then we certainly have, then we have equality in, in both cases here, in many cases here, okay? So for example, if you take the complement of a torus knot, then, then it's true. <coughs> okay. Um, so I should mention that this limit uh, of Farber here is uh, related to some known limits so this is first one if each gamma n is normal in uh, pi uh, so gamma n here is also finite index, and it's nested since so the gamma n plus one is a subgroup of gamma n. Okay. Then in this case, uh, gamma n go to one if and only if it's uh, exhausting. It means that if and only the intersection of gamma n is one, the trivial element. Okay. So mean that uh, for on the Benjamin tram limit. So uh, assume that x here is a, a is closed hyperbolic three manifold. Okay. And then gamma n here is just sequence of finite index subgroup. Then gamma n go to one if and only if the corresponding covering uh, so this is ds converge the sequence uh, converges to h3 so this uh, notion here uh, benjamin uh, schramm convergence here uh, was introduced by a group of uh, seven people right so let me do that a b so seven people <laughs> but the next letter is not c okay actually the next is uh, is here is Young Beringshin here. Okay, there are a group of seven people, Abed, uh, Bejerong, well, I don't remember all of them. So <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, uh, what actually Farabia introduced this notion without any geometry a long time, in 96, and this was uh, a few years ago, right? Four or five years ago, I mean, this notion here. Uh, and there's also, if you look, and, and if you look at the so-called the Sophic uh, approximation, then actually this is uh, just exactly the Sophic approximation in this special case. Okay, so Sophic group. <coughs> okay, so uh, that is the the, uh, the the limit gamma go to one in the tracial sense. So why do we need this uh, trace here? And and what's the relation between the this trace, the uh, the torsion and the volume? <coughs> o 
Okay, maybe I also mention here uh, the growth, the case when you have the growth of the Betty number. So instead of the instead of the um, of the torsion, well, suddenly when you look at homology group of the finite curve, you have the torsion part and also the uh, the Betty the free part, which is measured by just the Betty number. So this is the so a long time ago there was a theorem of uh, of Kashdan is that if you take so again he considered the case when you have a sequence of normal subgroup finite index and the it's nested n so gamma n plus one is subgroup of gamma n and also uh, it's also so the intersection is one here so it's just the standard usual one okay then he show that then the limit when n's go to infinity and you take bj of gamma n you divide by the index so this pi gamma n uh, and then you this will be less than or equal to the so-called the l2 betty number of the universal covering of x so this is a universal covering uh, so here, again, here I return to the case when x is just any finite, connected finite CW complex. Not only three manifold, but just any finite, uh, any connected finite uh, CW complex, okay, then the growth of the Betty number is less than or equal to uh, the, uh, the, 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 the so-called the L2 Betty number, okay? But I'm not going to define this, it's just like a, a, a just a remark here. And then at that time, so this was in around 72, 73. And then Gromov asked whether you can have uh, an equality here. Okay, and eventually it was uh, Luke who showed that actually we have an equality here. Okay, so that is the Luke theorem which say that actually the growth of the Betty number is exactly the n 2 Betty number. Okay, and then, and then uh, a few years later, I think it's in, in 96, in the paper when Farber introduced this, this notion of trace here, he showed that uh, you can replace this requirement here by just gamma n go to one in the trace one sense. Okay, so if you have, uh, uh, if, if you can approximate the trace by finite demand, by, by, by finite quotient then, and the actually the, the, the Betty number of the corresponding covering Converges to the to the L2 Betty number of the of the universal covering. Okay, so so what we had here, so 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 here we have only an analog of uh, of uh, of Kashdan inequality here. We still don't have the Lick corresponding uh, statement of Lick the theorem in this case here for the torsion case. And I should say that to the torsion case is, is considered much more difficult than the than the Betty number case. Okay, and there are, uh, so this is, there are related conjecture, related and independent conjecture given by uh, Bergeron uh, Venkatesh. And also Luke told me that he also came up with something very similar like this one a long time ago. Yeah, he's an expert in on these n 2 Betty numbers. Yeah. And two invariant. Uh, so I first formulate this conjecture in around in a, a, at a conference in uh, in Barnes in 2007, uh, and actually did not make much progress on this. I all I can prove is just this inequality here. Uh, where I first for the case of uh, uh, normal uh, subgroup, I mean this uh, simpler case, and if I, and and just later I found that proof can be generalized to the case when you use Fabian uh, convergence here. <coughs> okay. Uh, any questions so far? Uh, what what is constant here? Uh, X here is. Uh, Yeah, and that is just zero. But yeah. on the left-hand side, it's 
What? This, this, you mean the torsion here? Yeah, the upper bound. The upper bound here, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the volume of X. So is there a moral reason why it's a constant there but depends on which has the large <coughs> manifold and which has the less manifold? Uh, well, somehow it happens that the Betty number, uh, the M2 Betty number of all three manifolds should just be zero. Yeah, you move this volume here. It's just the volume of the covering. Okay, so now let me uh, explain why we have here, I mean, uh, distance here. Uh, so for this, I need to, so let me write here a, uh, a formula for the volume in terms of some, the so-called fuglet Cardison determinant. So let us consider a simple case. So suppose x, for example, just complement of a knot, although we don't have to uh, just consider this case, okay? And assume that you have a, a well, some good presentation, for example, just a vertical presentation, so a1 of 2an plus 1, and then r1 of 2rn here, okay? So just good enough presentation. And then, so x will be homotopic, it will be, uh, homotopic to a two complex which has just uh, one zero cell uh, and in this case n plus one one cells and then n two cells okay <coughs> and uh, the CW complex of the universal covering will be homotopic to just take this one here you get here z of pi to the n, uh, this is z of pi n plus 1, z of pi sigma 2, 1 here. So this is uh, d2, this is d1, where d2 here will be the n by n plus 1 matrix. So this d2 here is just dri over daj, where this is the Fox derivative. Uh, so this could be matrix of the size n times n plus 1 with entries in z pi and uh, d1 here <coughs> and then d1 is just the column just 1 minus a1 to 1 1 minus a sub n plus 1 that is d1 so that is the uh, s the CW complex of the universal covering of the of the two complex associated to this presentation. Okay. <coughs> so let me call this J here. It's just the n by n sub matrix of D two. So J is just uh, so this is just D R I over D A J, where I J will be from one to n. Just you remove the last column of the D two, you get this J here. Okay. <coughs> so there's a this is, so there's this theorem here of uh, this is the Fluke and Chick uh, and it is based on f uh, earlier work of uh, uh, many people so Gugelier, all the people and Lot and Martin all the people uh, it's the big theorem it just say that well actually in this case here in this special case it just say that if I take the Fuglach Cardison determinal of this J, then I get the volume of X over 6 pi. Okay, and I will explain what is this determinant in a moment. Okay, but it's just some kind of determinant of this differential matrix will give you the, uh, the volume. Well, actually, this is the, the so called the L2 torsion of this complex here. And and, this, and the theorem just say that the M2 torsion is equal to this number here. It's just the volume over 6 pi here. Well, most many forms was proved earlier in the work of Burgelia and, and, and Lot here. 
and for the case when you have a boundary, it's the, the work of Luke and Schick in this case. <coughs> Just a remark here is that, so this matrix here is an n by n matrix. Uh, so this is a matrix n by n with coefficient in z of pi. <coughs> now you can abelianize the group pi for the case when when pi is the not group, if you abelianize, you get, so this uh, abelianization, you get into z of t plus minus one, just the Laurent polynomial in the meridian, okay? So if you take the determinant of abelianization of j, okay, so if you, <coughs> when you abelianize this, you get an n by n matrix with entries in a commutative ring. So there you have a, a well-known determinant. You just take this determinant, then this is equal to the Alexander polynomial of the not K. The Alexander polynomial. Okay. <coughs> so you see the, the same J if you, if you don't abandon this and you take the determinant, but this is some kind of real determinant, you will get the volume there. Okay. If you ab abandon this, you get the Alexander polynomial. Okay. So now let me explain what, what is this here the full Gladys-Cadison determinant of a matrix with entries in the grouping of a discrete groups. But first let me explain the case when, when pi is just the trivial group. Okay, so this pi is just the trivial group. So I have a matrix A, it's just matrix of size n by n uh, with entries in z. Okay, in this case, just the fundamental group, just z. Okay. <coughs> so what is, uh, in this case here, uh, so let me give the definition, I will give uh, uh, a geometry interpretation of this. So we define get of a to b, and take the square root of the product of all eigenvalues, so s is an s bigger than zero uh, product of s, where s here just single, so it's just eigenvalues of a star a. Okay, so s is just the product of all positive singular values of the matrix a. Okay, so that would be, uh, so let me call me this dead prime because it's not the usual determinant. Okay, so you take singular value of the matrix A, but you remove all the zero ones, and then you take the product. So in, in particular, this is always bigger than zero, okay? so because it, even if when the set is empty, we declare it to be one. So it's always bigger than zero. This is the determinant that prime of A. Okay, so what is really, the, so the geometric meaning is the following. <coughs> Well, A here will give us a map from, so you know that from Rn to Rn. Okay, so this is, uh, so A here can be considered as a map from Rn to Rm. And we consider each of this is uh, just Euclidean space, standard, with standard structure, Euclidean space here. <coughs> okay, if you look at any map, so you have here, this is the kernel of A, and this is the, uh, kernel pub, which is usually called the co-image, co-image of A. <coughs> and here you have the image of A, and this is the co-kernel, which is perpendicular to the image, okay? <coughs> and the map from this one to this one here, well, it's just suddenly map the, the whole kernel to zero. And what really happens is just map this one isomorphically onto this one here, okay? The A will map co-image of A isomorphically onto A here, okay? And then the determinant is what? The deter that prime of A here is actually, it's exactly the determinant of the restriction of A on the co-image. Okay, so what does this mean? <coughs> determinant that you restrict on this and you take any, say, any set of volume one, for example, the image of that we have the volume that prime of A. Okay, so it's just the, just how the volume is magnified by, by 
by, well, by some number, the volume in this space here is magnified by some number, and that is exactly left prime. Okay, so it means that left prime of A, left prime of A is just equal to the volume of A of some unit, uh, of some, for example, you take the unit, uh, unit, uh, uh, unit cube, right? Unit cube in co image there. You take a co unit and, the, and take the, the image which, it, which will be in here. And measure the volume of that of the image that could be the, that prime of a. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So I use here the. So, uh, so when I say his standard, so this is standard. Okay. So it means that you have here z n standard z n the image here and 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 we use the metric coming from from this one here. So this is yeah depends on the metric here. So actually all things here. So, so actually, this can be defined. It's just F any map from V to W, where these are just Euclidean or inner product, inner product space here. Euclidean spaces. Okay. Then you can define what is that prime of F. Just that. <coughs> okay. So why this that prime is related to the to the to the torsion. Of homology. <coughs> so if you have a uh, Lattice in uh, the first space, so in Rn. Just so this means there's just uh, some zk here in Rn, just a subgroup in Rn. <coughs> then we define uh, the volume of this lattice to be just uh, determinant of the uh, so this is the v1 vk, where v1 vk here is just a basis uh, of lambda. So just you take a spanning uh, a uh, the, the volume the, the the volume of the parallel pipe spanned by by uh, basis element of this one here, and you declare that as well. You need to take the uh, absolute value of this. So okay, so that is the determinant of of a uh, <coughs> of a lattice in there. Okay, so now again A here is the matrix M by N with coefficient in Z. Then we have the following fact here. So the, uh, the determinant prime of A is equal to the volume of the kernel of A times the volume of the image of A. It's a simple, beautiful formula for uh, just for, for this that prime here. Okay, so you have the kernel and then you have the image, which is this is the lattice in Rn in the first one, and this is the lattice in the in the other one. Okay. Uh, <coughs> and and you take the, and then you can measure the volume here, and the product will be this one here. Now the kernel of A. The kernel of A is just a, is always a primitive lattice. It's always primitive. So primitive means that, so lambda is primitive. Means lambda should be equal to the plane, should be equal to a subspace cut out, uh, so it means that lambda should be equal to lambda tends to zq intersection with zn. So zn here is the standard lattice in Rn, and primitive means that lambda here is obtained by you cut out the 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 the, amb the ambient lattice by just a subspace. Okay, uh, from the definition, it's clear that kernel of A is primitive. However, image may not be primitive. Okay, so let Image bar of A is the is the you do <coughs> bar here means that you take the image of A tensor uh, uh, ZQ and you intersect this with Z to the N. So this is the you have here a lattice here. Uh, this is uh, and this is the fundamental domain of of the of the lattice. And then in here you have few several uh, in the integer points in this lattice here and then uh, but but the bar here means that you have to count all these points also okay 
And so it's clear that <coughs> the index, so you have here, uh, so th this volume of this image of A is equal to, so this is image of A, is equal to the volume of image A bar, and then you multiply by the index of the two lattice, okay? And actually the index of the two lattice is exactly the, the number of elements in the torsion Z of the co-kernel of A. That is uh, in the co-kernel, as it means that you, you divide, if you take Rm, if you take Rm, you divide by the, by the, uh, by the image of A, then you get, uh, then look at the, to uh, the torsion Z part, the Z torsion part, this is exactly the index of, of this image A bar over uh, image A here. Okay, so this is the reason why. Uh, so we have this here. So this is the volume of, so it means that we have the following formula. Okay, let me see. So it means that we have the, fo the following formula here relating the, the uh, geomet geometric determinants and the, and the torsion of the, of the map. So it means that the net prime of A is equal to, you have here the volume of the kernel of A multiplied by the volume of the closure of A times the size of the torsion of the co-kernel of A. Okay, so that is a, a simple formula. And then from there, <coughs> from there, I mean, it's because, uh, because this, is, this is bigger than or equal to one, it's also bigger than or equal to one. We can see that then, it means that the torsion Z of the co-kernel of A is less than or equal to net prime of A. Less than or equal to net prime of A. Okay, that is the a relation between this geometric uh, determinant and the and the torsion part. Okay, and we will use and we will use this in improving the uh, the theorem that I mentioned before. Okay, so this is uh, net prime A here is the is a is a simplest case when of of this full fledged Cartesian determinant when the group is trivial group. So let me now go to the general case. Well, uh, in this case here, it's just, w if you look at this one here, uh, all the entries are just integers, so it must be an integer here, and it's non zero. All, uh, I mean, the span of this here, this lattice here, it's, it's, it's just no. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so what is so this net pi of A where A is a matrix, uh, so maybe just n by n matrix with entries in Z pi. So this is called full flat Cartesian determinant. I think it's around 1951. <coughs> well, so again, I mean, if, if A is just a matrix, an n by n matrix with coefficient in Z, in C, then we have the following log of dead A is equal to trace of log A. If you can properly interpret the log function here, then log of determinant, uh, log of the determinant is the trace of the determinant, okay? And so, if you can have, if we have a good trace, and we can, if we can also define uh, what is log of A, then you can have a good determinant theory, and this is the idea of uh, full-fledged Cartesian. Okay, and and we know that in the in in any von Neumann factor of type two one, you do have a log, and you have a, a good trace. So this is the reason why they introduced the full-fledged Cartesian de uh, determinant on von Neumann. Uh, factor of type one, two one, okay. <coughs> so 
in order to define this log of a here, uh, let me give a, a quick definition here. <coughs> so first you declare d to just to take d is a star a, so to uh, make it a positive uh, operator, where a star a star a uh, is just equal to, in this case, ij, just a j i. Sorry, star. Where, <coughs> where the star c pi to itself is the c linear operator defined by sum of c g g star. So it should be just the sum of c g bar and g inverse. Okay, with uh, left regular representation, you can see that this is exactly the adjoint operator. And so first of all, b should be equal to this a star a here. Okay. Now this is a, an, a positive operator and bounded operator on the so-called the L2. Uh, uh <coughs> so this is a, a, a positive operator on. Uh, so the action if so this will be an n by n now matrix uh, with uh, with entries in z pi. So actions on L2 pi to the n. Where L2 pi here is the, so this L2 pi is the, uh, the set of on some CGG, so that, so just the, uh, uh, the Hilbert space with base pi. Okay, and this is also Hilbert space, and then you multiply either on the left or on the right, you get a, uh, a operator, and this would be, and this A star is really just the, the usual joint operator of A, and this is positive here. <coughs> okay, and then the, Spectrum of this, spectrum of a star a, <coughs> now the spectrum of this, of b, would be something from zero to some number, some norm of b, okay? And so if I look at epsilon plus b, spectrum of this could be in epsilon to this b plus epsilon, so you have here, this is zero, and this is from epsilon to some number here. But the main point is that the log function is defined on C, so the log can be defined on C minus the interval from minus infinity to zero. <coughs> and so the spectrum of this operator here will be on this one here, on the, on the domain where the log function, when this branch of log function can be defined, so according to the a holomorphic calculation you can calculate you can define what is log what is log of epsilon plus b which is also a, an operator and everything here can be defined and you can define also the trace of this operator so now you can define what is trace of this okay and then you declare this to be and then you exponentiate this <coughs> and you declare this to be the determinant of epsilon plus b okay so that is the determinant of epsilon plus b. And then uh, to define determinant of b, you just, and then the determinant of b here would be just the, the limit when epsilon go to zero plus of determinant of epsilon plus b, which is, which is uh, always now bigger than or equal to zero number. It's just no negative number, okay? In some very special case, well, in some cases it, it's gonna be zero, but for three manifold entries, it's never zero. So that is the, determinant of b, and then b here is, in a sense, I have double a here, so I declare the determinant of, of a to be uh, the square root of that of b. Okay, so now determinant of pi of a is just the square root determinant of b. Okay, so that would be a non-negative number. So, <coughs> and uh, an example. So example, the first example is if pi is finite <coughs> and A is any matrix of size n by n uh, with coefficient z pi. Okay, in dominant, in this case, A can be presented by a matrix script A, which is an n pi 
times n pi matrix, just ordinary matrix. But now, because every point, ev every element will be presented by a, uh, a permutation matrix of size pi by pi. So you get a matrix of size n pi by n pi. So now it's just a matrix with with the with entries in entry in z, and so the determinant pi of a in this case would be you take the usual determinant that prime of discrete a and you raise to 1 over pi here. That is the, the determinant in the case when the group is a finite group. Okay. Maybe the second example is that if pi is the, the abelian group z to the n, okay, so the, f the uh, uh, and, and now I have a, a polynomial just in z of zn. And if I choose the basis of this, it could be just z, just a Laurent polynomial in n variable. You have a Laurent polynomial in n variable. And f is an element of this will be considered as a one by one matrix. So f here is just one by one matrix. And you can also take the determinant, Fuglach Kadison determinant of this f here. And it turns out to be something that well known. So now in this case, determinant of z, n of f. And I will assume that f is not zero here. It's equal to the so-called the Mahler measure of f. Uh, so this is equal to integral over tn uh, of log absolute value f d sigma. Well, actually, x 